Hi there, welcome to BSF Recovery Team. If you've been following along in our last video, you know we traveled down here to South Central Wisconsin to retrieve uh, an S10 uh, that's been stuck out for nearly three years uh, out at the edge of a swamp. Uh, I have here the owner of the S10, his name is Josh. Say hi Josh. Hi Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's here to give us the story on uh, how and why this uh, S10 got stuck. Uh, so what, what was the deal? Well, I got in the truck. I got it uh, earlier that summer. I for $500. It was wrecked. The guy wrecked it. Couldn't get it to start. The easy fix. All right. He ended up changing the fuel pump and all that. And I took the relays and switched them around and started up. Well, I use it as a wood hauler, and this is my first chance to go out mudding with it. So we had a whole group of people out there. We were all going out mudding, and uh, the place we're at, the guy's son had passed away, but he made a trail called Joe, and they called it Joey's Revenge. And little did I know, nobody had gone down in a year and a half. Okay. And the guy, the, the dad was like, well, you should try Joey's Revenge. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's do it. Well, he had to walk me down. The trail. He had to follow, go in front of me, and tell me turn here, turn here, turn here. And we got down to the bottom of the damn thing. He looks at me all big eyed and goes, "I've never seen this much water down here before." Uh, and yeah. about a whopping ten feet, I made it, and there the truck sits. I uh -huh. tried recovering it that day with a with a fairly new Rubicon lifted with big tires, and that guy made about five to ten feet into the swamp on the other end. Had to wedge himself back out. And uh, me and my cousin went out there twice to try to get to it, and you'd go walking out there, and instantly, like my foot would sink, like right to my knee. It's just a just a marshy ass swamp out there, and it's got about a hundred yards to go before it's actually out of where it's at. The thought of turning around and going back up the hill, it was a thought, but it's too steep, too rocky. I really doubt we'd ever get back up the hill. Here we are now. Here we are now. Three, okay. three years yep. later, about. And It'd be great to get the truck back. I'm glad. So I'm glad one of my friends got a hold of you guys. This is a great, great deal. Yeah, uh, his friend uh, got a hold of me on Facebook. He asked me if I had any ideas on uh, how to get this truck out. Well, my first thought was is if the swamp was too marshy and wet in the summertime, uh, that uh, wait till weather conditions change. Uh, go in the winter time when the uh, mud is kind of frozen. As long as the S10 isn't stuck too deep into the mud. So that's why we're here, and of course we didn't plan this on the coldest weekend of the year, uh, but as it turned out, uh, we have record low temperatures right now, it is the coldest weekend of the year, so the swamp should definitely be frozen, um, but uh, the snow is, uh, what, probably about uh, 14, 16 inches deep right now, um, and it is bitterly cold out there, so we'll see how that goes. Now. I also uh, am under the understanding that we have to uh, do a water crossing to get there? Yes, there's the Peck River runs through there, but we have the embankment cut, so there's an entrance and an exit. Okay. And it's kind of half-assed gravel to go through it. Okay, so it should have a firm bottom. It should have a firm bottom. We're looking probably about a uh, foot and a half, two feet deep maybe. Okay, well that shouldn't pose too much of a problem. No. Uh, so we should be able to do that, and then uh, um, now I also understand that there's a creek and a uh, very narrow bridge to cross. Is that what we're looking, looking at? Yeah, we're looking at it's uh, the Peck River we cross and go around the hayfield into a cow pasture, and then there's this, it's called Lie Creek, and all it is is just a little ravine, but it's a big valley ravine and. The farmer, he drives a tractor across it, so every summer, or every springtime, he usually has to rebuild up this dirt. It's just a culvert with dirt piled over it and filled in, so, okay. that, you know, it's not, like, the edges will slowly fall through But it, it might be washed out, and it, it might be real narrow. It could be some washed out. I'm sure it's all, I'm sure it's still there, just depending on how wide it still is. Okay. So when we get to that, then we'll, because that's out there a little ways. I mean, the truck's about a half a mile out from the road. And okay. That's, that's about halfway between. About halfway there. So All right. One well, way or another, we'll figure out how to get across that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess uh, that's a bridge we'll have to cross when we get there. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> then we can get out to the S10, and hopefully we can get it unthawed from the mud, and uh, we'll get the record to pick it up and haul it out. So that's our plan today.
<laughs> so we hope it goes good. Um, we still got a lot of prep to do. We have to. Uh, we're going to change the tires on the uh, Gladiator to the larger 37-inch tires, and uh, we got to get things uh, thought out this morning and make sure everything starts and runs and unloaded and see if we can get through the snow uh, across the river and uh, across the frozen swamp and maybe get an S10 out today. Hopefully. I'm hoping so. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to see it back out on the road. All right, so stay tuned. So it's uh, really cold out here today and we want a hot trail lunch. So we're going to put our trail lunch on the oven right now, which is the engine. We got some pizza pockets here and some chimichangas. We're going to set them on the engine and let them cook for a few hours. That way we'll have a nice warm trail lunch when we're ready. Put them right in here between the intake manifold and the valve covers. Wrapped in tin foil so a little bit of oil or grease on the outside is going to matter. It's time to start lunch even though we just had breakfast. We wrapped up our burritos and our chimichangas and we're going to put them on the engine to get warm today. Nicely there in about two to four hours. Now, they'll cook for a few hours. Engine only gets to about 210, 220 degrees. So they ought to be nice and warm by the time we're ready to launch. Well, we're on our way to the S10, and uh, being very careful hauling this load on these roads. They are uh, they are covered in ice, and the snow out there looks pretty deep. The truck's telling me it's negative one out, um, but uh, we got uh, both Clifford and the tow truck. We started them at the hotel. They're on the trailer right now idling, so they'll be nice and warm when we get there. And uh, we'll see if we can get this out. Uh, we gotta change tires on Toby first, uh, put the taller ones on. And then we'll see if we can get through the snow and uh, across the river. And then of course we gotta get through more snow, I guess. And then we gotta cross a uh, very narrow bridge that may or may not be uh, intact. Um, uh, kind of a bridge, a uh, culvert. Uh, the dirt washes out on each side. Um, so hopefully we can get across that and uh, then we'll get to the S10. And then we gotta see if we can get it out of the frozen mud. And then back. So this is gonna be quite an adventure. Uh, a real recovery challenge. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. I haven't ever gave up on a recovery yet, uh, but you never know. There's always a first time. Looks like we're starting to drop into our river valley here. We must be getting close to where the S10 is. I know it doesn't look like it from the camera view through the window, but we're heading down a pretty steep hill right now. We must be here. No plowed parking lots around. Looks like we're going to be staging from the road. Hope there isn't too much traffic on this road. We might be blocking it from time to time.
stock GM 14 volt dually rear end. It's got a grizzly locker in it. Well, we're here. We got the wrecker off. Got to get Clifford off. Got to change some tires, and uh, then it will then we'll be ready to hit the snow. You guys from around here? Uh, we live in uh, Ellsworth. Oh, that's not too far from where we are, over by the cities. <laughs> Great cheese curds. Yeah. yeah. So you drove all the way over here just to see this shit show? Yes. Brought the oh, really? Max for some help. <laughs> yeah? So how do you know these guys? I grew up with Josh. Cool. The guy who's got a truck stuck. And where's Josh from? He's from here, Darlington. Oh, okay. Were you here when he got it stuck? I was not. Have you seen it? Uh, no. No? But it's been there for three years. <laughs> so where are you guys from? I'm Mike. I'm the guy that actually hits you guys up. Oh, nice. Great. I'm from Mount Horror. So were you uh, here when he got it stuck? No, I wasn't. He actually, we got to talking on Facebook about it. And, uh, giving him some tips and then I actually hit Eric up for some tips and then he's like well we should make a video so yeah cool good time and where are you from from here really yeah away. have you seen it yet nope. yeah how bad is it it's bad yeah because the pictures don't make it look that bad it's bad <laughs> it's marsh down there during the summer really yeah so it's in March Hey Chris, what are you doing? Eric, what is she doing? The door latch is froze on Clifford. You can only open it from the inside right now. So she's gonna sneak in. Not ready to take it off for the day. Hey, you nobody needs to see that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I guess he just went down to the river uh, on foot. Uh, they tried to get the KM down to the river, but uh, they got in there a little ways, and now the KM's stuck in the snow. So, and it's in our way. So we got to get the KM out before we can even get to the river. What's the temperature today? It's supposed to be high of five. With wind chill? No idea. My phone just Cold. my phone is saying it's a negative two right now. Well, we just turned the hydraulics on in the wrecker. They're screaming that fluid's cold. Getting the tires changed on uh, Toby, the Rubicon here. Uh, hydraulics seem to be warming up in the wreckers. She's not screaming at me anymore, so that's good. And uh, 
Hopefully soon we'll uh, see if we can go get that Can-Am unstuck. It's a two for one day. Yeah. <laughs> it might be more than that. <laughs> you got some bungee cords somewhere? Yes. Yeah. Chris, where are the bungee cords? Uh, there's some in the back of Clifford in the jerry can. In the jerry can of Clifford. What do you need bungee cords for? I'm tired of feeling like a gangster. These things are way too big and uh, they don't have any suspenders. So we're going to do the redneck thing. We're going to use bungee cords. Not in there. I got my uh, makeshift suspenders here, hold my snow pants up. I was tired of feeling like a gangster. Uh, couldn't find any bungee cords, so we used some uh, small uh, ratchet straps. Hope it'll work. Well, we're getting gear loaded here, getting the tires changed on uh, Toby, and uh, it's taking a little bit longer. When things are cold, things work harder. All right, well, we got everything all loaded up and uh, we're getting ready to head into the snow. Uh, first thing is we gotta see if we can get down to the Can-Am and see if we can get that out. So where'd we go in? We go in right here? Well, I see the Can-Am's tracks. Go buy it. Well, I guess Can-Am wasn't really stuck, just needed a different driver. Eric, are you heading in? Now we're 
Yeah, Alright, I'm gonna bring Chris and uh, the Gladiator in. Come on in, Chris. Try to stay in Eric's tracks. All right, I'm gonna grab the Gladiator and I'll be behind you. That snow is deep. We made it to the river. You can see that. There's a little ice on each side, open water in between. We'll wait till everybody else gets here before we try and cross the river. That snow ain't easy to drive, is it? No. <laughs> Morning, Chris. That they keep shifting up. See if he can follow sure. after all the trucks go through. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris's rope is probably the easiest thing to drive real quick. Hey, Chris! Oh, it's not? Oh, you just stopped. Oh, okay. Oh, they're coming down okay. with the Duramax. Yeah. Look, we're gonna, we were gonna grab your rope, but we're not. Well, we've, we've pushed it down a lot. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the rut yeah. Very... yeah, those duallys really mad at down. That's what I'd say about having a duallys. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Do you want to drive right. from here? You... Well, after seeing the river crossing, they decided to abandon the Duramax and the Can-Am, leave them on this side of the river, which I don't blame them. I would do the same. As you can see, we broke out the drone and the camera to see if we can get you a good view of the river and the crossing and where we needed to go. But even though the drone had a full battery charge, within a few minutes of flight time, the drone was screaming at us that it had no power and needed to come home. Even though we were able to get you a little glimpse of what we were up against. I wasn't too concerned about getting across the river. What did concern me though was getting up the bank on the other side. It looked like it was drifted in and there was no winch anchor point out in that field. Thanks for watching this episode of BSF Recovery Team. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode, the continuation of the three year stuck S10 recovery. Keep wheeling, be safe, and maybe we'll see you out in the woods.